In our previous videos, we've made a GPS of plant screen which shows the latitude and longitude of the device at the current time. In this video, we are going to activate this chronometer right past GPS age. Essentially, when the location updates, we're going to start the chronometer. A chronometer is like a stopwatch. So this will give us an idea of how old this GPS age is, or in other words, how long it's been since we've retrieved this GPS age. Anytime we get a new GPS location, we will restart the stopwatch. This won't take a whole lot of work to do, quite frankly. First of all, I'm going to go to my layout, which is Content GPS a Plant. This is called Chronometer 2. I hate having names like that, Chronometer 2, Chronometer 3. So I'm going to call it Chrono GPS, just something that I can remember. And we'll go ahead and save. And if I go back to the layout, uh, we'll see that our chronometer is a variable of type chronometer. So this gives me enough information to go to my GPS plant screen, just one moment, and use butter knife to get access to that chronometer. So let's go ahead, declare a variable of type chronometer, and we'll say uh, Alt Enter, that's good, and we'll call it Chrono GPS. I don't have to use the same name as I did in the layout, but I typically do just because it helps me remember. Then bind view R dot ID, dot chrono GPS and sure enough there's our chrono GPS right there. Uh, so now we've bound our chronometer. Now let's go to the on location changed method. I might need to search for this. On location changed and what we're going to do is we're going to say chrono GPS and then we're going to stop it wherever it is. If it hasn't been started this will have no effect. Then we're going to go to chrono GPS and set the base. The base is what is the current time. So in other words, from what time are we starting to count our stopwatch, starting to start our stopwatch? So for that, I'll say system clock and then elapsed real time. And finally, after I update the latitude and longitude on the screen, then I'm going to restart the chronometer. So chrono GPS dot start. Okay, and we'll save, take a look. I put in a new latitude and longitude, and you can see that the chronometer is starting to count down. Let's go ahead and push yet another latitude and longitude. This time we'll make it 12 for latitude, uh, minus 12 for latitude, and 62 for longitude. Note the GPS age right now is uh, 37, and then I'm simply going to hit send, and we'll give it a moment. We'll come back here. I might pause the video for a moment as we wait for a minute to elapse, because remember, it takes about a minute, uh, given that that's the interval that we used. Coming up on a minute now, and sure enough, there we go. You see, if you look there very quickly, it reset to minus 12 and 62, and the GPS age also reset. So while we can request a fastest interval and an interval when we're setting up GPS, it doesn't guarantee that we're going to get GPS updates that quickly. I found a lot of times when I was traveling that it might take a little bit longer for the phone to get a GPS location if I had moved location significantly. In other words, the phone does cache satellite data at some point and uh, it sometimes, and sometimes it needs a little refresher of that cache. Now you see, theoretically it's going out and it's asking for GPS location every minute. So about every minute this GPS age is going to change, it's going to reset in an ideal world. But in reality, I've been out at botanical gardens and I've seen sometimes it can take two to three minutes to get a GPS location if I've just recently arrived at that garden. Now the longer I'm there, the quicker my updates come. But nonetheless, adding a chronometer to my GPS did give me some kind of satisfaction that I was dealing with a recent uh, and timely GPS information. So I hope this has been helpful. In the next video, we'll see how to make this pause button uh, pause and unpause our GPS. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.